Hello students, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this video, we will look at differentiation from calculus from a completely different perspective. We will use the idea of derivatives to calculate the arc length of a random curve. At least I'll tell you the principle around it. So when you think about differentiation, when you think about differentiation, in school level, what you actually think is the rate of change. So you must have heard about this. Derivative is the rate of change of the function with respect to change in the input value, which is the x. So every function, let's say fx equals to x square. So if we do draw that function, it will look like a parabola. Probably you know this. Then this is the fx or y coordinate, y axis. And this is the x axis. One way to think about it is that if you change x, how fast y is changing. That is the first level of understanding of a derivative. The second level of understanding is this, that the derivative gives you a tangent vector at a particular point on a curve. And then you can add up the tangent vectors to find the entire length of the curve. Let's try to do it. So what I will use is, I'll use a parametric form of this parabola. What is the parametric form? Well, in this particular case, I will write it as pt equals to t comma t square, which basically means t is a variable, is a variable, and for every value of t, I am plotting the point t comma t square. So if t is equal to 0, I'll be plotting 0 comma 0 square, which is 0 comma 0. This point. If t is equals to 1, I will plot 1 comma 1 square, which is 1 comma 1, which is this point. 1 comma 1. If t is equal to 2, I will plot 2 comma 4, which is here, 2 comma 4. So every value of t gives me the coordinates of points on the parabola. That's why I call, uh, it's, it depends on the parameter t, so I say it's a parametrized equation, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is, I will calculate the tangent line at the point 1 comma 1, 2 comma 4 and so on. So from elementary calculus, you know that the tangent line, the tangent line, if it has the slope m, it's a line, so it has a slope, if it has the slope m, that is the derivative of the function at that point. So, fx equal to x square, if I take the derivative of it, f prime x, this is 2x. So, if you calculate it as at x equals to 1, the slope of the line is 2 times 1, which is 2. So, it's a straight line whose slope is but there is actually more to this story. What if you differentiate the parametrized form? What if you differentiate t comma t square with respect to t? Let's think about it. By slightly changing the value of t from let's say 0 to 0 0.1, you are figuring out the change in x coordinate as well as the y coordinate. So, you are essentially getting a vector that tells you how fast the point is changing and which direction the point is moving. So, if you differentiate t comma t square, you will get 1 comma 2t and this can be thought of as a vector. So, for example, 
at t equals to 1 this is 1 comma 2 what is 1 comma 2 if I take a separate coordinate system 1 comma 2 is an arrow like this I can do one thing I can copy this arrow and paste it here this arrow which was copied from another plane tells you how fast this particular point is moving and in which direction it is moving this is 1 comma 2 this vector this arrow denotes the vector 1 comma 2 let's put a cap on the top of it so for every point you can calculate a vector which represents the velocity of the point at that particular point of the curve okay all right so let's suppose we understand at least partly understand what's going on now how do we use this fact to calculate the length of a curve it's actually pretty simple what we do is we take 0 to 5 let's say this is t and this is the r cross r or x y coordinate plane so every point 0 is mapped to 0 comma 0 1 is mapped to 1 comma 1 2 is mapped to 2 comma 4 2 comma 4 3 is mapped to 3 comma 9 3 is mapped to 3 comma 9 4 is mapped to 4 comma 16 and 5 is mapped to 5 comma 25 so you see the entire map of the interval 0 to 5 to this r2 plane so it's like this now what i'm going to do is i will be picking points which are midpoints of each of these sub intervals Let's say 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5. I know the length of the arrow at each of these points. So I'm I'll be drawing arrows like this, which the derivative gave me. So 1 comma 2t is the formula for the arrow. So at each point, I'm drawing an arrow and then I will be multiplying this arrow's length with the length of this sub interval. In this case, it's one. So just multiply the length of each arrow with one. And then I will add up the arrows. There are five arrows. I'll add up the five arrows. That gives me the first approximation of the length of the curve. Now I have done it in five pieces. Now I'll do it in 10 pieces. Now the length of the sub-interval will be one half. So instead of five intervals, now I'll, I'll have 10 intervals. And I'll take the midpoint of each of the sub-interval. I'll calculate the derivative, which will give me the length of the arrow. I'll multiply it with the length of the sub-interval. So again, I'll have 10 arrows. Now I will add them up. Now I'll do it for 20 arrows, for 30 arrows, for 100 arrows, and so on and so forth. I'll keep on increasing the number of arrows. And I will, every time I'll calculate the sum of the lengths. And finally, I'll take the limit of the sum of the lengths that I'm getting out, getting out for at each step. This final limit is defined as the length of the curve. This final limit of the length of arrows is defined as the length of the curve. So the point to note here, friends, is that the way we think about derivative as rate of change, it has more to it than just the rate of change of the curve. It gives you the arrows that represent that change at every point. And now you can use those arrows to calculate the length of a curved thing. I hope you learned something. This is part of the calculus module of the ISI and CMI entrance program at Chinta. It's also used in the um, research programs 
which use machine learning at Chinta because machine learning requires vector calculus and this is like part of vector calculus. If you're interested in these programs, check the links in the description. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thank you for joining in today. I'll see you in the next one. Keep on doing beautiful problems.